economy. 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 Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? And I definitely didn't expect that we have thousands and thousands of economic freedom fighters in this class. All right, I might definitely understand why, because of everyone definitely wants to succeed, whether in education or whether financial. So today we'll be moving into our economic structures. We have to understand what holds what we call the economy. Okay, firstly, we definitely have to understand the word economy. What does it mean? Economy simply means it is a system or a process whereby Goods and services are produced so they could be sold or bought by a particular country or a region. Yes, that whole process of selling and producing goods, it is called the economy. Yes, guys, now let's write down our definition. What did I say? I said it is a process or a system. Yes. In which goods and services are produced to be sold or bought by a country or a region. Okay, guys, now that you understand our definitely definition, this is where the two systems that are used to calculate the economy are actually introduced. And the system are called the definitely what we call the GDP plus the GNP. Yes, guys, we have the GDP and the GNP. What is the GDP? A GDP simply means they are goods and services which are produced by individuals of the country or also businesses that are outside but then influencing the country's economy. So it is both the people that are living inside that particular country and other businesses that are outside the country but then are involved in South Africa. All right, guys. Then we move to our very much also GNP. The GNP is definitely almost the opposite than this one. But then the GNP only calculates the goods and services produced by individuals or businesses that are in that particular country. So no one outside the border it is included or the other business outside the border it is included. Yes, guys, now we have to understand that the economy for it to survive and for it to be able to be calculated by these two systems, we need four structures. We need four structures of the economy to build the economy, maintain the economy, and make South Africa to be what the EFF uh, is currently looking for. No, I'm not being controversial. I'm sorry if you are not an EFF member, but then I've been looking at economy, 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 economy. A lot of comments have been about the economy. All right, guys. So now let's move the four structures of the economy. We have our first structure, which is called our primary. Yes, this is our very much primary way. Primary sector. This is our first one. Our first one, it is our primary sector. Yes, and this is our first economic sector. It involves the land. It involves the surface in which you are standing on top of right now, guys. So that's why you were jumping the settlement geography just to rush into the economy, knowing very well that settlement, it is the primary place for economy to strive. The land, the land, it is the first important thing a government can do to make sure that its economy grows, whether its GDP grows or whether its GNP grows. We first need the land. That is the primary sector. The land, what does the land consist of? The land consists of what we call raw materials, guys. Raw materials. Everyone knows raw materials. We've been doing raw materials from grade nine. Primary sector involves raw materials. 
meaning the abstraction of raw materials, the removal of raw materials from the very same land which I spoke about. You jump settlement geography, but then it's coming back again because of it is the primary sector. All right, guys. Then now we know that primary sector involves the removing of what we call raw material from our very own land, right? And then we have what we call our secondary. Yes, guys. Secondary. We have a secondary sector. Yes. The secondary sector simply means the processing of that raw material into value-added goods. Yes. Because of we know that if you find a small anyana diamond, right, and try selling that very much diamond, which is a raw material from your very much land, that very same diamond will not be expensive as a diamond that has been processed into a ring, right? So if that small diamond was inserted into a small anyana metal so that it could be a ring, that will be much expensive than a small or a raw material. A processed goods, which is a value-added goods, that's what we mean when we say value-added good. They added another value on top of that small raw material, which was going to be not that expensive, guys. So that's what we mean by the secondary sector, the processing, the packaging, right? When they, when they are packaging things that you find on the store, things like that, they are coming from where? From our very same factories. Yes, guys, factories. So secondary sector, factories. Primary sector involves our very same agriculture and mining meaning farming, whether it could be cattle farming or it could be planting vegetation, different farming, right? That is our primary sector. Farming comes from the ground. Everything that comes from our land, it is the primary sector if we are starting to remove it. All right, guys, then we move to our third, which is called our very nice tertiary, right? This is our tertiary sector, guys. Tertiary yes. sector. And this is where you find me. People know me in different ways. You may know me as your teacher. Some guy may know me as his cashier, right? So I'm working at the retail store. I'm also a teacher. So I'm in the tertiary sector, whereby I'm using the very same added, the value added goods to deliver service or to distribute information. What do I mean by that? I mean, as a very much teacher, because of there was a tree, right? There was a tree which was planted on the land. And then Tachomo came on with his contractors. They cut off the tree, right? They took it into a factory to a secondary sector where that tree was produced and processed into a paper, right? And a book was created, right? When the book was created, it arrives in the tertiary sector. I took the books. I used the books to teach you, give you information, and also to give you the same books so you could write that very same information. So I'm taking the very same things that has been produced and have been added value and I'm distributing it to other people, right? I'm distributing the books to you. I'm distributing the very same pen to you. The Where do you find your plastic? From our very same land. It is raw material which is produced and heated up to create a plastic. Take that plastic, I distribute it to you. Guys, it started from the land, then production, after production, distribution. The distribution I'm also doing is as a cashier. I'm selling the clothing, whatever clothing shop I'm working at, I'm giving it to the customer, I'm giving them customer service, whatever. I didn't produce those uh, those clothing. No, I did not. I'm just distributing it. There was someone in the secondary sector which turned the raw material into a fabric, right? Uh, and yes, guys, this is where it starts. It starts from primary sector, secondary sector, then tertiary sector. But then it doesn't end there, guys. It moves to a very nice... The quaternary. Yes, guys. This is our very much quaternary sector. What does a quaternary sector simply mean? It is a high-tech sector, which involves research, 
and also development. The GIS, right? The Geographical Information System. Well, this is where you find it. The Quaternary. The GIS, data collection, things like that. These are people like scientists and your, your, your developers, such as your, your web developers, your social, your, your software engineers, your, your, your doctors. This is where people that are obviously using the system to produce something. All right, guys. So this is how it actually starts. It starts from the very much quaternary, right? It starts for our very much quaternary. These people are very much important but then everyone is very much important in the cycle of the economy because of this is an economy cycle this is what we mean by four structures of the economy so the quaternary what does they do they first research right and find a particular land which is ready to be used for agriculture or other purposes right so they are used to identify areas for specific things whether for mining or for just factory to be located so they are used by the quaternary they research a perfect location for a perfect place or for a perfect business right guys so obviously they research and find a fertile land where people can come and do agriculture and they make their own profit guys and make money all right gdp stands for gross domestic product GNP, Gross National Product. All right, guys. Now that we understand the structure of the economy, I think we are moving nicely. Right, guys? So we know that the primary sector, it is very much important also, guys, because of without the primary sector, uh, there's nothing that is going to create the economy. Right, they can identify the land, but then if no one is willing to do agriculture or doing willing to do mining, Guys, there are no products. So the more mining we do, the more farming we do, a country's economy also improves and makes a lot of money. So these people have, have to be very much respected, uh, the, mine, the miners and the, the agricultural people, because of your eating right now. If I wasn't eating, do you think I was going to be teaching you this lesson? I would be frustrated as a hell without anything to eat. So the agricultural people are doing us nice, guys. So we have to understand that in the agricultural sector, we have two types of agriculture or two types of farming, a large scale farming and a small scale farming. That will be a topic for another day. But then for now, I think you definitely understand the structure. We can recap. What did we say? Gross domestic product, the total goods and services which are produced by the individuals and the businesses of the country and also businesses outside the country, but then that are influencing the economy of that particular country, right? And then the GNP, it is the total goods and services produced by permanent individuals. Yes, guys, the permanent people that are living in that particular country or region are contributing to our GNP. All right, it guys. It starts on the primary sector. The primary sector discovers the iron, right? That iron, it is then taken into the factory and created or produced or processed into a steel, right? Once it has been processed into a steel, we know what is going to happen. They can use that very same steel to create a car, assemble a car, create a car. Then we know our very much Marquesa will be very much willing to do what? To transport people using the very same product which was mined, then produced or processed, and then now he's using it for service delivery. Yes, guys, this is how it is obviously interlinking each other. This is what we mean when we say there are four structures of the economy. And if they are all strong, we will have a stronger economy. Okay, guys, now we'll be moving to a much deeper agricultural and mining primary sector to be exact. Okay.